Yeah, we do. Our guest tonight uh, from the Butthole Surfers, the guitarist. Uh, and, you know, I'm a big fan of this band, man. Ever since their very first release on Alternative Tentacles Records back in the day. I hate that expression, back in the day. But we do have him on the line uh, right now. Not back in the day, but right here and right, right now. Right now, man. Yeah, guitarist of the Butthole Surfers joining us now. Hello to Paul Leary. How's it going, Paul? <laughs> it's going great, thanks. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Yeah, you being here. Are you located in Texas? Yes, in Austin, Texas. Man, a lot of our guests recently are in Austin. That town is just full of cool people or, and just really eccentric people. Wild. Everybody's coming here and have been for like the last 20 years. <laughs> right? In fact, I was one of those people at one time. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. I was reading some article just like yesterday or the day before, and it said something about Silicon Valley infiltrates Austin. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't realize that Silicon Valley people were infiltrating Austin, whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think Apple's building a university here, and uh, Tesla's building a, a plant here. Oh, boy. Well, that brings jobs, I guess. You know, I hope that it remains known for what I think of when I think of Austin, which is Austin music. Well, the city's changed quite a bit. <clears throat> I, I used to drive up here in the 70s. I'd skip out of high school, and drive up to Austin and watch a movie or go to the lake, and just hang out. It was such a such a nice place to be. Right on. I've, I've been there and, uh, you know, I had a good time when I was there, but I was strictly there to see some music and, and to, uh, you know, go home. <laughs> so... Hey, Paul, I was wondering, a lot of folks are talking about your new solo album. Can you tell us the title? Born Stupid. <laughs> I knew it, but I wanted you to say it. I love <laughs> I, I, I love that title, man. Did you come up with it? <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's the, the title song for the album, Born Stupid, kind of came to me when I was riding my bike around town. And, it, you know, it's from the heart. It's, it's describing myself. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to have been born a lot smarter? <laughs> right? I ask myself that often, and there's never an answer. Um, the, the song, too, the very actual title track of the album is really good, which we're going to follow the interview with. Um, do you have any particular favorite uh, tracks on the album besides the title track? Uh, do you like to eat a cow and uh, sugar is the gateway drug? <laughs> Of course, I like them all because I, you know, I did them all. It's passing gas. Everybody likes their own, <laughs> right? Um, what label are you on, or or is it, is it on a label? It is on Shimmy Disc, which uh, was around, gosh, twenty or thirty years ago, and then they they stopped being a label, and and then they became a label again, and I'm their their first new act on the label. Interesting, and it's not your first solo outing, correct? No, I did one about 30 years ago for uh, Rough Trade Music over in England or wherever they were located. Yeah, I remember that, man. How did that work out for you? Yeah, you know, a lot of bad press. Yeah. I remember, I remember one, in, uh, one review of it in an English publication said, man, that guy can really not sing. <laughs> I bet you probably put that one on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was embarrassing you know I, I think i ended up taking boxes of that record to the dump oh man wild bro uh, when's the last time the butthole surfers performed gosh we played a show in san pedro down south and uh that must have been about six years ago interesting Did, didn't you guys do your last album in 2016 or is that not right I think it would have been more like 2000. Wow, that long ago. Yeah, my my memory gets pretty hazy, you know, over you know anything over like 20 minutes. God, I can relate, believe me. Um, when's the last time you talked to Gibby Haynes? Probably a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, you know, I'm, I, we stay in touch. We're all, we're we're tight like brothers. Yeah, you guys started this band way back in the, well, it morphed into the Butthole Surfers, but you guys were doing this like in the, what, late 70s before the Surfers name, right? Uh, well, we went, we went to college together in the late 70s, starting in the late 70s, and I, I graduated in like 1980, and Gibby graduated the year after that. And, uh, you know, we were, we were both listening to punk rock and new wave and all that 
stuff that was floating around back then, and we we loved the same kind of music. And uh, after I graduated, I didn't I didn't get that dream job that I was hoping for. So Gibby talked me into picking the guitar back up, and uh, we made a band and kind of stuck with it for the next thirty year, years or so. You know, it's uh, some people try to like dress up funny on weekends and you know be rock and roll or act eccentric. You guys seem like you were like birds of a feather, and I, I mean this in the most polite, respectful way. But you and Gibby both seem like you were just made to, to meet like a couple of guys really into weird stuff and just different kind of people. And that, that's pretty cool that you guys met each other, man. <laughs> it was it was fate, fateful, you know. Uh, we went to Trinity University in San Antonio. And, you know, he was the he was a guy on campus wearing a black leather jacket and spiky hair. So, you know, he, he stood out. You know, he's like six foot seven or something like that. Is he really? I didn't know he was that tall. Wow. Yeah, he was uh, He was the captain of the basketball team. Crazy. Now, how tall, <laughs> how tall are you, Paul? I'm just six even. I'm near six feet tall. <laughs> now, how about your drummer, King Coffee? How, long, how tall is he? Gosh, he must be eight, eight or ten feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's I, think he's, I, I think he's probably like six two or six three or something. He's a he's very tall. You guys are all like Lemurians. <laughs> I don't, you guys should live in Mount Shasta. <laughs> yeah, we should live in Mount Shasta. <laughs> <laughs> Who lives in Mount? What, what's up with Mount Shasta? Oh, the butthole surfers live inside there. <laughs> <laughs> with the Lemurians, yeah, I, I can remember one morning uh, on tour. I was driving the van through the night with the. The dawn broke the next morning just as we were coming up to, to Mount Shasta, and the sight was just spectacular. There was a purple haze on the ground below, and I had to stop and pull over and, you know, smoke a joint. It was so... so well, we were just talking about this purple haze today, weren't we, Tracy? Wow, that's really strange. Yes, there was a um, Derek has another radio show called Earth Heart Radio, and he had a guest on today who was talking about Mount Shasta and his experiences there, and he had a story about seeing the famous purple haze on the ground and the trees and stuff at Mount Shasta. That's so crazy that you mentioned that, and we heard the same thing from someone else the same day. Yeah, that's wild. So, it, did you guys get any photos that day? <laughs> no, I, that was that was the days before cameras were invented. Right, because I know you guys were always uh, in a van, right, doing stuff around the country. Yeah, I mean, we, can you, if you can imagine that we spent the the better part of our glory days touring without cell phones. I do remember those days very well, man. I started out in the early 80s, and a few times you guys played in Chicago when I was from uh, Peoria, Illinois, just a couple hours south of Chicago, and a few times I got invited to parties that you guys were going to be at, and I, for every time it happened, I couldn't make it for some reason, and I used to get so PO'd because I'm like, man, the butthole surfers are going to be at my friends tonight, and I can't go meet those guys, so I somehow never got to meet you guys, but boy... <laughs> We did parties in Chicago. Yeah, well, that's what I heard. The stuff of legend. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff of legend. <laughs> Maybe. I remember playing at the Metro and uh, a couple other places and, and some weird sports bar. Oh, and probably the Cubby, the Cubby Bear. Yeah, the Cubby Bear. That's what it was. Yeah, crazy. That's a legendary bar, man. And you know, and I gotta admit it, I never got to see you guys live, and it makes me so mad. Two bands I didn't get to see, and that's the Surfers and the Cramps, and I'm still smacking myself in the face because of that. Oh, the Cramps, <laughs> yeah. We we played a a New Year's show in Washington D.C. opening up for the Cramps. Wow. Yeah, that was a pretty big wow for us. Yeah, they're just such legends, and so are you guys. But I mean, the Cramps are just so different and the great. The Cramps are the Cramps. I mean, that's when we felt like we were starting to make it in this world when we opened up with the Cramps. Did you have much interaction with Lux and Ivy at all, or do they stay to themselves? Or uh, no, not too much. I can remember they had this English stage manager that was getting really upset whenever I walked too close to the guitar player's uh, super fuzz pedal that was taped to the floor. There was no pedal board; they just taped the damn pedal to the floor. And Every time I'd come close to it, I'd have some guy threatening to, to take my head off. <laughs> was that Brian Gregory on guitar at the time? I don't know. The voodoo guy with the white voodoo hair and stuff, the bones? <laughs> I, I, I think they had a female guitar player. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. They did have the, several different eras of the cramps. That's right. And then, uh, you know, I, I hung out with them on a tour bus when they played in Austin a couple of years later, and they were super friendly. 
that's rad. Do you have a favorite Butthole Surfers album yourself? Oh, gosh, it might be Rembrandt Pussy Horse or Locust Abortion Technician. And I know that John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin uh, produced some music from you guys, of course. And how was that experience? <laughs> that, that was another big wow experience. It's like, you know, we, we started having success on the road. And I think at one point we were the top broken independent act on the road, which got the major labels interested in us. And then, you know, we signed to Capitol Records. And I just thought that was just too out of this world to be on the same <laughs> label as the Beatles and Dean Martin and Grand Funk Railroad. And there, there we were on Capitol. And we had to get any producer we wanted. We had a bunch of them. Wow. You have to do the job. It was weird. And, and John Paul Jones's name came up, and it's like, God, I, I'd love to work with Led Zeppelin. <laughs> right? <laughs> so was he cool? Oh, he was way cool. He was he was a lot of fun to work with. He was, you know, he's a super cool producer. He, he attended every note that went, you know, down to tape and was um, just, you know, worked real hard and drank real hard. He quit drinking after our record. <laughs> <laughs> you drove him sober. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we, we went to this cool studio in Northern California in Marin County called The Site, and it was next to Skywalker Ranch, and they, they asked us when we showed up, you know, what what would you like to drink? And I said, oh, I'd like a a bottle of 16-year-old Lagavulin and single malt scotch. And they asked John <laughs> Paul Jones what he wanted, and he said the same thing. <laughs> so they brought us a bottle of that scotch, and we drank it the first night. And the, the second night, there was two bottles on the table, and we drank two bottles. And then the third night, there was four bottles. Wow. And then, then we were drinking a lot. <laughs> it sounds like it. Was that your drug of choice, alcohol, back in the day? Yeah, uh, pretty much, because, you know, we were on tour, and, you know, of course, we couldn't afford things like cocaine, like the rich people, but, um, <laughs> you know, we were, we were playing at clubs, and they would give us as much beer as we wanted, so, yeah, we drank a lot of beer. Well, the rumor has it that you guys did a lot of acid. Is that true or not true? Or is that Gibby or no? Or? You know, I don't... I don't, you know, I, I can see why people say that about us, but I don't, you know, I think maybe a time or two, but, you know, I was never, you know, we, we were much of an acid band. I think people talked about us doing it more than we actually did it. Okay. Because you did such trippy music, people just automatically associated you with being acid heads or whatever. Yeah, you know, it's, it's we kind of were asking for it, I think. Yeah, right <laughs> i know i was yeah, i was reading a quote uh from you and, and you know and it made sense i feel the same way too but it was about touring and how you love being uh, that one hour a night on stage is amazing and great and it's such a great high but the other 23 hours a day when you're in a band touring really sucks do you still feel that way yes i do and so you know i i do not miss the road at all yeah it's it can be really <laughs> mundane it was great. I mean, when I, you know, living in San Antonio, I couldn't wait to leave. And so we, you know, Butthole Surfers packed up our van and went out to California and, you know, we ended up touring for, for years and years. And it was really fun. And the most fun part was touring in a van, you know, and we were driving and didn't have a heater in the van and no gas gauge. We were running out of gas and just all of those antics, you know, in the long long haul were, were pretty fun and you know then we got soft and and wealthier and could afford a tour bus and drivers and road crew and stuff like that and then all the, the funnest, good then all the funnest part was the old days i was gonna say then all the good drugs came or no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> for, for some of us perhaps I, I know who you're talking about i'm not going to say another <laughs> word because i don't talk about people when they're not in the room no, but I'm just I'm lightheartedly kidding, you know that. But, um, you know, I'm really a big fan of the stuff you guys have done, and I really appreciate the Brown Reason to Live. I know it's the first one, but a lot of times they say a, a band's first and second records are some of their best. I just love that EP. It's, like, so freaking awesome. The Shaw Sleeps and Lee Harvey's Grave and just all that, the Barbecue Pope. Just love it, man. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of proud of it now, but, you know, back in the day, it, just, it was just... We recorded it, and then listening back, it just seems so weird. It's, it's like I was almost in, embarrassed by it, but then over time, it's like, you know, that's actually not too shabby. There's there's some decent songs on there. Well, you know, I admit it's definitely some of the weirdest stuff ever recorded, but I love weird stuff like, you know, Dr. Domeno and just different types of bands, but 
your band takes the cake as far as uh, some of the weirdest stuff that's not like 1960s psychedelia. But uh, yeah, I love it, man. Are you any of you guys influenced by the 60s psychedelic bands? Oh, of course. I thought you know, Rocky Erickson and, and all of that stuff, or Status Quo, and yeah, I, you know, I I grew up on the on the Beatles, and then got in, you know, got into some psychedelic music, and then into the hard rock of the 70s, and all that kind of stuff. The Seeds? You like Sky Saxon and the Seeds? Now I'm embarrassed because I'm, I'm not familiar. Oh, they did the uh, Pushing Too Hard, Pushing On Oh, okay. That was like the, <laughs> the big hit. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't one of my favorite bands, but yeah, I like that song. Cool. Um, what's going on for you guys in the future? Do you think the Butthole Surfers will be doing any new records or tours in the future or anything like that, or no? No, I, I, think, it, I think it's over. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's hard to imagine. Uh, you know, we we tried to record a, another album a couple of years ago, and it just it did not go well. So that's why I ended up doing a a solo record. I just like I had all this stuff that I was working on, and I was just figured the only way it was going to get done would be to finish it myself. Yeah, sometimes that's the way to do it, man. I, I can relate to that as well. Um, will you be doing more solo records? And are you are you doing a lot of promotion on the new one? You know, I'm I'm talking to you right now, so yeah. that's that's the promotion. Excellent. Um, yeah, I'd love to do another record, and you know, I've got another band called Cocky Bitches, um, with my good friends who live in Cameron, Texas, and we put out a, an album about four or five years ago, I guess, and I'm I'm really hoping to record another album with Cocky Bitches. Nice. And I was checking out your new album. Yeah, you, you got a, a, back in the day. You guys recorded the song Gary Floyd, and what made you decide to do a new version of Gary Floyd for the solo album? Uh, once again, I was riding my bicycle, and I started thinking about some of the old songs and how they could be redone, and it just it just popped into my head to do it like one of those creepy. <laughs> songs from the 70s like you might hear on an elevator or something yeah i really dig that version are you are you friends with gary floyd to this day uh you know we're not close friends but yeah i you know i admired him way a whole lot back in the day and butthole surfers used to open up for the dicks quite a bit and they were you know one of my favorite all-time bands and i was also into sister double happiness an oh. awful lot oh gosh me too and uh, Gary Floyd's always, you know, he's he's a real sweetheart guy, and so he's always he's always been nice to me, which which I thought was pretty amazing. Yeah, we're uh, Sister Tracy and I are heading down there. I think in the last part of June down to San Francisco to do a little recording with Gary. And I just feel like saying I'm not worthy, but I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, when I heard your new rendition of the Gary Floyd song, that's what prompted me to get a hold of you about this interview. So prop, <laughs> prop, props to Gary; it's come full circle, man. <laughs> well, he's a you know he's a Texas hero. He may live live in San Francisco now, but. There was a time when Texas could call him our, our own. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's a great guy, man, and a legend. How many songs are on your new album, Paul? I think it's 10. It's not a very long album. I think the record label was laughing at me for how short it was. But, I, you know, I got 10 songs finished, and then my computer blew up. So I was like, okay, I'm done. We're done now. Um, how, how do people get the album if they choose to do so? Well, it's, it's on Shimmy Disc, which is uh, distributed by joyful noise so they you need to go to shimmy com or joyful noise i believe and if you just want to listen to it it's available to listen to on spotify and pandora and all that other stuff yeah paul leary and what is the name of the album again born stupid born stupid that's right born stupid is it officially released in 2021 by the way yes it came out in february oh good it doesn't have that darn I actually made uh, six different billboard charts for one week wow that's pretty damn impressive yeah, it was it was gone by the second week, but the first week it was six charts, including best new artist. <laughs> nice man. Well, at least it, does, <laughs> it doesn't say twenty twenty, which is like the new six six six. It says twenty twenty one at least on the album, because last year was pretty vicious. Yeah, it was, but it, it was pretty vicious. Lots of good music coming out, and that's what we're grateful about. So, you know, thanks so much for making the time uh, to chat with us and uh, let us know about your new tunes. And we're going to go ahead and roll into your song from the new album, which is called Born Stupid. And uh, we appreciate you uh, coming on the Church of Rock, Paul. Yeah, thank you hey, so thanks, much, Paul. Thanks for having me. 
Thanks, Sister Tracy, and, and I appreciate you guys having me on the show. Absolutely, and we look forward to maybe having you on again in the future. Yep, thanks cool, so much man. for making the time, and stay safe, my friend. <laughs> you too. Thanks a lot. Okay, cheers, Paul.